Yeah, she now rocking with Mr. Wit. A little flavor from Q Beats, you know that this a hit. Michael Jackson bad, yeah, this is it. A few months ago, I was about to call it quits. Until I came across personalized math tutoring. FBT, the number one solution. So what you waiting on? Everything. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Wit with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about estimating square roots by hand to the nearest tenth. So let's check that out. So first of all, why would you need to find the estimate of a square root? Well, ladies and gentlemen, some of your math classes you may find have teachers and instructors that want you to find this out. And also, it's just a good technique to have in case you don't have a calculator on hand or you're taking a quiz or a test where you can't use a calculator. So this process I'm about to show you can come in handy from time to time. So you're going to first of all find a perfect square that's going to be less than the value that they give you and also another perfect square that's going to be greater than the value that they give you. Let's see how this works out ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot simpler than this formula would suggest. So let's check out our first problem. In problem number one we have the square root of two. That's right, the square root of two. So the first thing I'm going to find are two perfect squares. One value that's lower than two and another value that's greater than two. So I know a square root less than two is one. So I'm going to show that I have the square root of one here. A square root that is greater than two is going to be the square root of four. So if you don't know your perfect squares, now it's a good time to learn them. So remember, one squared is one, two squared is four, so forth and so on. And I've already suggested that you learn your perfect squares up to 20 if you want to be the A plus student that you know you can be. All right, so next in line, you'll want to find the square root of one. Well, that's just one. In addition to that, we're going to take the difference between two and one and divide that by the difference of four and one. All right, so this is our setup so far. We'll then simplify this, so I'll have one plus one over three. Next, you'll want to find the decimal representation of one third out to the hundredths place. We need two places past the decimal in order to round this estimate to the nearest tenth. So therefore, if I have three going into one, that denominator going into the numerator, and I'm doing this in long division here like you love so much, you're going to have three goes into one zero times. I'm going to bring up that decimal. And three goes into ten three times. Three times three is nine. We'll then subtract, bring out a one and a zero in. And three times three is nine once again. So we can stop right here because I have my decimal representation out to the hundredths place. So combining one and one third in decimal notation will have one and 33 hundredths. And remember this process is supposed to get us close to the nearest tenth as an estimate. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll then round this one and 33 hundredths to the nearest tenth to end up with our result which will be one and three tenths. And this is going to be our estimate for the square root of two ladies and gentlemen. Now if you were curious the actual square root of two, ladies and gentlemen, the actual value out to the thousandths place is going to be one and four hundred fourteen thousandths. And if you compare the actual result to our answer rounded to the nearest tenth, you'll see that we're really close. We're just off by a tenth. All right. So that's the answer to problem number one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. Let's keep this going here. In problem number two, we want to find the square root of 27. We always start out by finding which square roots this value will fall between. So 27 is close to 25, which is a perfect square. The next square root that is higher than 25 is 36. And look how 27 falls right between that, right? So remember, we're going to start by taking the square root of that first value here. And we know that the square root of 25 is 5. So that's going to be the first part of my answer. Then, in addition to this, I'll have the difference of 27 and 25 as well as the difference between 36 and 25. All right, now that I have this, we'll go ahead and simplify. So simplifying, you'll end up with 5 plus 27 minus 25 is 2, and then 36 minus 25 is 11. You want to find the decimal representation of two 11s. All right, I'll have 11 going into 2, showing where the decimal is, bringing up that decimal. I know that 11 won't go into 2, but it'll go into 21 times, so that gives me 11. I'll then subtract, bring on a 9 to 0, and 11 goes into 90 eight times because that's 88. 
All right, I'm going to stop right there because I have my hundreds place, and that's what I needed. So now I can show that 5 plus 2 elevenths can be written as 5 and 18 hundredths. All right, but remember, this process is designed to round to the nearest tenths place. So that means to the nearest tenth, I'll end up with 5 and 2 tenths as my result. And this is the answer to problem number 2. All right. Once again, in comparison to the actual answer, the square root of 27 is going to be 5 and 196 thousandths. And rounding this value to the nearest tenths is exactly 5 and 2 tenths. So we end up with the same answer for this one. That's an excellent estimate, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's problem number two. Let's go ahead and move on to our next problem here, which is problem number three. In problem number three, we want to find out the square root of 52. So the first step is to find the two perfect squares that 52 lies between. So we know that a perfect square, 49, is less than 52. And I also know that the square root of 64 would be the next perfect square after 49. And lo and behold, we have 52 that lies right between it. Start by finding the square root of 49, which is 7. And then you'll add to that the difference of 52 and 49. So we'll write it as 52 minus 49 here. And you'll divide it by the difference of 64 and 49. From here, we'll then simplify and you'll have 7 plus 52 minus 49 gives you 3. Then 64 minus 49 is going to be 15. We want to rewrite 3 fifteenths as a decimal. All right, so we'll use long division to convert 3 fifteenths into a decimal. We'll have 15 going into 3. I'll bring up my decimal. I'll add a 0 here. And 15 won't go into 3, but it'll go into 30 twice evenly. All right. So we got a winner on that. So now all I have to do is rewrite our result here as 7 and 2 tenths. And that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's our estimate rounded to the nearest tenth. And if you're curious about the actual result of the square root of 52 to the thousands place, you would end up with 7 and 211 thousandths. So even if this actual result was rounded to the nearest tenth, we would end up with exactly the same result we have here, which is seven and two tenths. So once again, we end up with an excellent, perfect, fantastic estimate rounded to the nearest tenth, and we did it by hand, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we're now off to problem number four. All right, in problem number four, we have the square root of 333. The two perfect squares that surrounds this number is going to be the square root of 324, 324 being a perfect square, and the next in line would be the square root of 361. All right, I know that the square root of 324 is 18. I'm going to add to that the difference of 333 and 324 and divide that by the difference of 361 and 324. All right, from here, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the following step where I simplify that fraction. 333 minus 324 is gonna give me a value of nine, and 361 minus 324 gives me a value of 37. So we want to use long division to convert this 9 37ths into decimal notation. So using long division, I'll have 37 going into 9. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of zeros and bring my decimal up. I know that 37 won't go into 9, but it'll go into 90 twice without going over. That gives me a result of 74. I'll then subtract, bring down a 1, a 6, and add that 0 there. Being as though 37 is close to 40, I know that 37 will be able to go into 160 approximately four times. So four times this 37 gives me 148. And that's all I need for now because I just need to get out to the hundreds place. So we'll rewrite our solution here as 18 and 24 hundredths. And remember, we want to round this to the nearest tenths place for this process. So 18 and 24 hundredths rounded to the nearest tenth will give me a result of 18 and 2 tenths, which I'll have for an answer here. Once again, I'll go ahead and show you what this actual result would be out to the thousands place. And in this case, it would be 18 and 248 thousand. So once again, notice the value of this process, ladies and gentlemen, is very valuable. If you need to find out values, round it to the nearest tenth and you don't have any other way or you want to show how you got your result by hand. All right, now we'll be looking at our last and final problem for today's lesson. And this is example five. 
So in problem number five, I have the square root of 110 and 25 hundredths. We're going to use the same process to find out the estimate to the nearest tenth of this number right here. We're going to start by locating those two perfect squares that surround that value. I know that the square root of 100 is going to be close to 110 and 25 hundredths. And the next perfect square in line would be the square root of 121. We begin by finding the square root of 100, which is 10. We're going to add to that the difference of 110 and 25 hundredths and 100. So setting up my fraction here, I'll have 110 and 25 hundredths minus 100. And we'll divide that by the difference of 121 and 100. All right. Simplifying this, we'll have 10 plus 10 and 25 hundredths divided by 21. All right, next you want to simplify your result and write it as a decimal. So I'll have 10 plus, and I'll use long division here, I have 21 going into 10 and 25 hundredths. Let's bring our decimal up. I know that 21 won't go into 1, won't go into 10, but it'll go into 102 four times without going over. So that gives me a result of 84. I'll then subtract and I'll end up with 1, 8, and I'll bring down that 5, and 21 will go into 185 8 times without going over to give me a result of 168. All right, now that I'm out to that hundredths place, I can stop with my dividing. So I'll next show that I'm going to add to that 10, 48 hundredths, to end up with a result that is 10 and 48 hundredths. And rounding this to the nearest tenths place, you'll end up with 10 and 5 tenths, ladies and gentlemen, which is your answer. All right, nice red box around that. The actual answer, ladies and gentlemen, to problem number five, which was the square root of 110 and 25 hundredths, is 10 and 5 tenths. It's the exact same thing. So we were able to find out the square root of 110 and 25 hundredths by hand, ladies and gentlemen, without a calculator, and it is accurate to a T. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes estimating square roots by hand to the nearest tenth. And this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. Once again, please rate, comment, and definitely subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. Peace. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Pre-cal calculus. Can't forget trigonometry.